This episode of The Communicator brought to you by Teleoptics, your total communication solution provider. Also check out www.primexwireless.com. Welcome back to The Communicator, and today we're going to talk about Synchronous Network System, which is an enterprise time and monitoring technology. Right here we have a clock in front of us. With me today is Mr. Chris Hartley, so we'll talk a little bit about that, and Chris, welcome. Thank you. And uh, today we're certainly talking about, like I said, the synchronous time, and uh, Chris, we're going to talk a little bit about why is it important? Why is synchronizing your clocks important? Well, um, there are a lot of... Um industry such as medical or education that, that uh, synchronized clocks is, is really important. Uh, in medical you might need it to determine when uh, medication was given, uh, when uh, what time was a baby delivered, things like that. And you have to have all the clocks like in the operating room, in the hallway, everything on the same schedule to keep everybody moving at the same time. And it's no less important in a school setting uh, for the amount of class changes, things like that. Uh, you really want to make sure you've got something uh, to uh, sign a bell schedule to. Uh, make sure in both, both settings you're making sure that everyone is set on the same schedule. So, and the only way you can do that is to have every clock in your network synchronized so everybody's working together. Well, I know that it's certainly in a lot of uh, school environments, I, I don't know how many schools I've walked into where the clocks just don't work. So certainly they're keeping up with the, with the clocks that are actually in the offices mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a matter of the time where the assistant or the principal is keeping up with it and then they just hit the bell. So I, I know that in an education environment that's something that's very important. Certainly in the medical environment, uh, at time of death, mm -hmm. uh, being able to make sure that that uh, certification is kept properly. Mm -hmm. uh, when things are administered, certainly medications are administered properly. Uh, what, uh, so what are some solutions? Why? Well, what are some things that are out there that they can be? Well, there's a, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, there's a uh, 70, 72 megahertz GPS system, and how that one works is there's a core transmitter uh, with an antenna on your roof, and it's talking to a GPS satellite, just how your, your car GPS or anything else talks to it. And there's a timing server involved there through the GPS system that gives it accurate, uh, exact, real time. So what happens is that transmitter then retransmits that out to the GPS clocks on the 72 megahertz uh, channel to the clocks it tells them and they all update themselves. The interesting thing about that is during a clock implementation you go out and you hang all your clocks, uh, turn them on, you don't have to set every clock. You just leave them whatever time they start. Um, when it syncs that first time, when you tell it from the, the timing server there pulls that time, you can watch all the clocks adjust themselves all through your campus uh, and they'll all set themselves accurately. So um, so it's really handy. You, it cuts out all that time. You could have 100 clocks, 500 clocks, doesn't matter. They're going to all set themselves and keep themselves within 300 milliseconds of being accurate. Um, now there's two different ways, like I said, we can do that. One is the 72 megahertz GPS. The other uh, is a 2.4 gigahertz clock. Um, there are uh, analog, like, like this mm -hmm. clock, which is an actual analog clock, uh, there are also digital readout clocks, and in, in a medical setting, there are some that have countdown timers. So it can actually, you can pre-program, pre let's say, three minutes. You know that in a surgery scenario, you've got three minutes to do something. I don't know the, the time exactly, maybe it takes me hard, it's something serious that you've got an exact amount of time. They can hit that clock, they'll put two clocks next to each other, they have the, the starting time and the countdown time, and they're synced together, so you're watching them. Uh, you know, to, to give yourself a double check. Or administering compressions. It, anything, I mean, that could be something else. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, so when when uh, life depends on it, literally, uh, it's really important for that to be accurate. Um, but the 2.4 gigahertz clocks, they run off an existing 2.4 network. So say you're a hospital, you have uh, a wireless implementation for data, um, the clocks will then work off a different um, VLAN on that, you set them up so they won't interfere with anything else, give them IP addresses and they're going to work exactly like the GPS clocks do. Now those, you will have your the time being pulled off your server is going to what, it's what's going to distribute that throughout your network uh, and then keep all your clocks accurate that way. So your two choices are um, GPS clock or Wi-Fi clock, they work the same. Uh, again, some are battery powered like this one. Um, the uh, LED display ones are not battery powered because they 
draw on them is a little bit more, but then all you have to do is put them in place. You've got some power, their surface mount or recessed clocks that we can do. Um, and uh, just to, you know, depending on your environment, there's some, they even make really fancy ones with metal frames, wood frames. There's some pretty snazzy looking ones. And there's several manufacturers that do this. These just happen to be Primax that we, we're work, working with today. Um, check out the bo bottom of the screen here. We got uh, the website to check uh, for Primax Wireless. That's one of the uh, organizations that we work with. So check those out, certainly that uh, Chris was alluding to. So uh, certainly check those guys out. Go ahead. And uh, additionally, um, if you're doing the 2.4 Wi-Fi clocks, there are other things you can add to that as well. That server that manages that can do other sensors, not just clocks. You can do temperature sensors. So if you're a hospital and you've got um, refrigerators, you've got nurses that go around and check these, these organ freezers or blood samples or something that have to be a very particular temperature. Um, they're required, there are state and federal regulations that require them to check those, those refrigerators and check the thermometer temperature and it has to be logged every day. Well, the, rather than uh, having, you know, using up valuable personnel time to do that, um, the system can do that, pull the reports, these, these temperature sensors, and you can actually download the report. You know every second what that hold that temperature and it can have variances in there and it can send you alarms if um, say that temperature gets out of variance so rather than lose valuable uh, medical supplies it sends you an alert that says hey refrigerator on floor B hallway 2 the uh, there's too big of a fluctuation here we need to check that out so it can keep you from losing valuable material well there's two two things that you've talked about that I certainly want to mention uh, Chris had said certainly the, back to the clocks here regarding batteries uh, I know that some of the people that are watching here might think, well, batteries, I certainly don't want to worry about, well, when did I change this, when did I change that? Some of the, the management interfaces uh, that you'll be able to do um, from a PC, mm -hmm. it will send you an alert when the, there's a low battery indicator. So you certainly know which clock that is going to be able to tell you that the battery is going low. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to write to the one that you need to and be able to make those changes. Uh, the second is the variance that you'll have in the temperature sensor. Uh, you'll be able to set the thresholds and it knows of the false positives so it brings down the, the number of false positives so for those nurses that are actually opening the refrigerator and uh, it knows that the temperature is going to go up because they're actually exactly. opening the refrigerator and they'll be able to close it so they know the amount of time and they can estimate how much time they'll have that uh, open be able to know the te temperature change and be able to close that back so you don't get false positives right. things that will alert them be able to do those and it's not just temperature it can do uh, humidity sensors things like that uh, you may have a water sensor that uh, in a uh, control room, so if water is on the floor, in the event that you've got a leak or something and water hits that in the server room, you can put them there. So if you ever have water come up in your server room, it tells you immediately and it said alert out to maintenance so they know to get in there and get that cleaned up. So uh, again, all those sensors can be added to the 2.4 system. And uh, the, I guess the big benefit there is you've, most places already have their wireless integrated. They've got the wireless up. So all you're doing is adding some, some appliance to a, uh, an adding the use to something you've already got. So you can be a pretty big uh, uh, money savings there to add this on top of something you've already got. Well, certainly have a chance to check out Primex uh, mm -hmm. website and contact, come give us a call if you have a question, certainly about uh, time synchronization, but also that Chris had talked about humidity control. Uh, also temperature sensor uh, and some of the other sensor uh, capabilities that this solution has. And with that, uh, signing off for Chris and thank you for tuning in. Thank you.